Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Geekism Studios. It feels like an age since we're back in here. I can only apologise. Um, there's lots going on really, but it is great to be back. If you enjoy this video, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you're new here and you'd like to see lots more creative gaming for grown-ups, all you have to do is click subscribe. So, uh, you'll see me starting mid-build here. The, uh, the first little bit of this was done on our charity live stream that we did uh, a few days ago now by the time this one comes out. And uh, thank you so much for everyone who joined and donated. We made uh, over six hundred pounds, uh, which is about seven hundred fifty, eight hundred dollars, something like that, uh, for a couple of really fantastic causes. So thank you very much for everyone who uh, who joined in there. Uh, so what are we building? We are doing another movie set. This time it is the uh, the larger Western Street set from the video game The Movies. If you don't know uh, what we're doing here, is building a backlot tour. Uh, but all the rides or attractions in this park are based on other games we played on the channel uh, so here the backlot tour is based around the movies which is a fantastic uh, old classic simulation game uh, where you build a movie studio uh, so all the sets we're building here are pretty close replicas I, I with this one i'll be honest with you i take a few liberties uh, but they're pretty close replicas to the sets in the game and uh, we've got a couple already we've done the bar and we've done the um jail i think was it oh no bank was the other one that's it we did the bar and the bank uh, and then this is the third one that we're going to do the final one of the western set and that is the larger uh, street area the, the the outside set so to speak uh, one thing we're going to do as well as just building the set is also turn this into our first kind of effects show I suppose you would call these if you've ever been on one of these backlot studio tours um, in Universal or, uh, or or Hollywood or anything anywhere like that uh, they often have these larger sets set out uh, and they use them as a way to uh, demonstrate uh, practical effects, fire effects, water, things like that. Um, there's a couple of notable famous ones, uh, Subway being one of the classic ones where you're under a subway and a lorry falls down from the ground and it all fire and, and then also they have uh, a few sort of water ones where sort of water gushes down it shows you how much water can be thrown through really quickly through a set so I thought that that would be a really great idea to use that one here now we're keeping it quite simple uh, with the effects later on I think it turns out really great I think it looks really good but it only lasts about 10-15 seconds the main reason we've kept it simple is because we have to use the display sequence so I still I know most people claim paths to be the worst thing in Planet Coaster I still say that the display sequencer is the devil basically <laughs> uh, you can get stuff done and when you do it looks really great like um, we've done a fireworks show using it uh, that we call spectacularis we had I, I had a lot of fun making it and it turned out really well but oh my god did it take a long time uh, so I vowed ever since that day I vowed that we wouldn't spend a lot of time on uh, on this place because again because quite frankly it's it, it's just soul destroying <laughs> so uh, so we didn't spend that long on it at all uh, but i think what happened turned out really quite well and also one thing i really want to do is showcase some of the new animatronics that are in the game now due to the uh, studios pack uh, there's some really great western animatronics that work really well for this kind of thing there's one that's like a rolling firing fiery barrel uh or like a like a, a cart a rolling cart that's full of barrels that explodes and then there's a water tower uh, that's like the water tower we already have in the game, but that sort of cracks open and blisters and, and the water spurts out, and they're the ones we go on to use. So uh, in a moment, we're going to get onto that, but first of all, we'll have to make up these buildings. So again, like I say, I'm basing these on uh, the, uh, the shots from the movies. I'll put a couple of shots up now of what we're building. There you go. You can see the um, the sort of left and right side of the building. Again, I've kind of got a little bit of liberties here with these, uh, but I've tried to get them as close as I can. There's, there is the saloon, the OK Corral. And uh, this one, I think in the movies, it says that this one is a restaurant, I think. Um, but I, I didn't quite like the idea of that for some because I'd already got the saloon and the hotel as well. And again, I was I've always I always try and keep in my mind the props we have in the game, and especially with something like this where you can be a bit little, little bit more fantasyful and, and and a little bit more sort of open to what you use as opposed to what we use in something like Pinewood Hills. Uh, here we can uh, be a little bit more crazy, and I know that we have some really great coffins and Western coffins and gravestones and things like that. So I decided later on that this building will become a. Uh, 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 undertakers, I suppose. Yeah, an undertakers, or at least the place that builds the coffin and the tombstones. You know, maybe a stonemasons or something like that. Um, at the moment, I leave it relatively blank. The main reason I left it blank was because the screenshots I'd taken from the movies game, obviously, for the most part, the movies is top down, so you couldn't actually see because of the overhang what the building was. I went back into the game later on to have a look, and um, 
uh, and then realized that it was it looked just like a simple restaurant so uh, that's why we came up with that one this next building it says telegraph on it um, so I assume that means you can you know send a telegraph uh, it also has this sort of upper barn open with a um, uh, with a pulley which I thought was quite good um, so we try and keep to that as best we can uh, again trying to keep similar sort of signage and doors and windows and things uh, to make it work and then also I thought telegraph that might be the kind of place that you would find a newspaper as well you know, newspapers did exist in, in, in some form at least at uh, this sort of t time of the uh, century and also you can remember that it's a movie set I'm not actually building a western town here I'm building a movie set at a western town so they may have ta taken liberties with the sort of stuff that they can have available so that's what we did there so there you go look just put some doors and windows on that and kind of leave it to it to be honest um, uh, there's one the only thing is a hanging sign and, and then other than that we move on to our next building which is a jail I think Something I found out quite interesting about Jails this week, the spelling on this jail is J-A-I-L, uh, which is how I've always spelt it, and I've never heard it spelled any differently. Uh, I was told a, a couple of weeks ago that in the UK we spell it G-O-A-L, more like a goal or something like that. No, G-O-A-L, that's goal, isn't it? Something like that, though, G-A-O-L or something, jail. And I'd never heard this term before, and I assumed that it was an old term, uh, you know, that's now gone out of favour, but apparently it is still classed as the British spelling of the word jail, and we've just kind of taken the American one on, which is pretty crazy. Uh, the jail in the uh, the movie set has a one of these uh, water tanks on the top, and this one's probably a little big, but um, I didn't really feel like it was worth building my own one just to kind of get the size 20% smaller so I've gone for the slightly larger one I don't think it looks too bad um, and also I'll be honest with you I, I, I was a little bit short for time this week making this because um, I've had a little <laughs> We've, we've had a bit of a problem with uh, with the wife and Xander. They're, they're, they're both fine. They're perfectly well and healthy and happy. Uh, but they've actually gone to France for a few days um, with uh, Nick, with her parents, um, just for a couple of days, just to have a little bit of a break uh, whilst I was in work all weekend. And uh, they were going to have a great time. Unfortunately, their plane was cancelled back, so they're now there till Saturday. Um, don't get me wrong, they don't feel too hard done by. They've got an extra few days in the, in the beautiful summer in France, so they're, they're okay with it. Uh, but obviously, I spent a lot of time trying to organise when they're actually coming back and when they weren't and getting hold of the, tr the plane company and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, I actually lost quite a bit of time today, um, which would have gone on to, on to Planet Coaster. So this video is uh, not quite as much as I would like to have got done. Uh, but overall, I think what we have done has turned out pretty well. Uh, hopefully that won't um, happen again this next couple of weeks because this begins the start of my uh, little experiment in being a full-time YouTuber. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen this there. I also mentioned it on the live stream as well. Uh, I've taken two weeks off work, mostly because I had holidays to use up and we're not going away this year. Uh, obviously, we're saving a lot of money because we're emigrating next year. Um, so we're not having a big holiday this year. So uh, I had to use some holiday up and I decided I'd take a couple of weeks off the day job uh, and just try and be a YouTuber full-time for a fortnight and just kind of see what the work flows like uh, see how my um, uh, sort of creative juices keep up uh, having a whole sort of uh, you know week now don't get me wrong I'm not sitting down sort of nine to five every day making videos um, so the actual content uh, quality uh, sorry quantity of videos will probably stay the same I have dabbled in doing more than one video a day uh, but really I don't feel like geekism is that kind of channel uh, I prefer the idea and I don't mean to blow my own whistle here but I prefer the idea of making slightly better content um, rather than uh, more content if I have the time so the plan is uh, for the next couple of weeks that we're going to be having um, just a bit more uh, of a shine on the videos I guess so uh, one good example I've been using is uh, Kerbal Space Program program which I'm actually loving at the moment by the way if you've not checked out the Kerbal series please do we're having such a blast in that game uh, blast being the ultimate turn there there's a hell of a lot of explosions <laughs> uh, but with Kerbal uh, at the moment unfortunately a, a 30 minute video for Kerbal is 30 minutes of gameplay and it's actually quite difficult to get anything done in that time so instead what I'd like to do is be able to play the game for maybe two or three hours and then edit that down into a 30 minute 40 minute video or, or, or you know the timings don't matter exactly but that kind of thing playing a bit longer getting a bit more done and then showing you guys the highlights as part of the video as opposed to just doing a 30 minute straight up let's play um, so things like that really that's how we're going to be looking at carrying on for the next few weeks at least if I can keep it up great afterwards if not uh, you know we'll drop down but hopefully you won't notice any difference uh, I'll just feel a little bit better that I'm, I'm being able to spend a bit more time on the videos and like I say uh, even if the actual output doesn't change um, I'm just going to 
do it more of a test for me as to whether or not I'm able to get myself up in the morning and sit down at the computer and treat it like a job, so to speak, as opposed to just sort of grabbing an area in there, which is what I'm doing at the moment. So it's going to be an interesting um, sort of uh, test, really, an interesting experiment to see how it ends up. Uh, the final building for this set is the uh, the church. The sort of it's quite an old style, almost like a Mexican style church, I guess. I don't know whether the idea is that this this town was originally built around it and we we took it from the Mexicans or something like that. I, I, there's no sort of backstory with the sets. Um, in fact, I think a lot of them are quite random. But uh, yeah, it looks like it's meant to be a, a sort of Mexican type church. Um, I decided originally to use the castle walls, but given this sort of orangey uh, colour to them, uh, mainly, mostly because you get the most variation with the castle walls. It's the most filled out wall set in the game, um, so it we thought it'd be good for doing uh, for doing this build. Uh, actually, it turns out this stucco one is more useful because you get some more interesting top pieces that actually match this church pretty well. There you go. That's when I realise and look at these pieces and think, oh no, actually that would probably be better. So we actually change it out here for stucco. Um, and again, I think it looks, turns out pretty well. Uh, this is the, my, the building I'm least happiest with in this whole build, to be honest with you. Uh, and that's just because I've had to make quite a few um, sacrifices with it, really, to get it looking anything like uh, like the proper building. Uh, it has these really ornate towers either side, and I just couldn't find pieces to work. Um, maybe using windows to kind of structure them might work, but I was very conscious of time. You'll notice this video is going a little bit uh, going out a little bit late today. Unfortunately, I do apologise about that. Uh, like I say, just unfortunately got a little bit short of time today, sorting out real life stuff. Um, so I may come back here when I've got a little bit of free time in the week and tidy this building up a little bit. Um, but it's very far away from where you were, uh, from where the actual uh, trolley stops, the actual tour trolley, and it's it isn't the central point that it needs to be. So I'm quite happy with keeping it, you know, relatively simple. Uh, just for the uh, the sake of having this done and being able to move on to something else because we've been working on this ride and the subnautical ride for quite a while now it'd be nice to be able to wrap those up and uh, and finish uh, finish and move on to something else so subnautical ride is going to be the next episode and hopefully we're going to finish it um so that's going to be the plan we'll get kind of we'll get um we'll get uh, subnautical finished this this ride probably will run for the entirety of the series. I think this is going to be one of those ones that every time I'm a little bit burnt out on the main ride that I'm building, I'll come over here and build a set or two. That's kind of how I feel it's going to go. I think that'll work quite nicely. Um, so that's probably going to be the plan. Here you'll see me placing in this awesome uh, water tower that crashes. Originally I have it pointing towards the back. I end up changing that in a moment. And then here is this um, this flaming barrel uh, thing that's absolutely huge. I mean, the actual build, the actual uh, cart itself isn't huge but the, the place it runs from it really is a long run and we have to actually edit the buildings here a little bit we have to drop this gunsmith back uh, which takes us a short moment just to redo the uh, the wooden uh, uh, the sort of uh, balcony area there and uh, moving everything back and then uh, we have to actually put the uh, the church there on a little bit of a square as well. Now, the one thing I haven't done here is the is the backside of all these buildings. So uh, the rigging and the and the sandbags and the dustbins and all that kind of thing. Uh, we'll probably do that in a live stream. I think that'd be quite a cool thing to do uh, while I'm having a chat with you guys. So uh, we'll probably do the back end of all of these buildings and maybe a bit of a lighting pass as well. So I'll be honest with you, this is going to look a bit of a hot mess for a moment because we're sped up. But I really want to leave the process in for using a display sequencer. So the first thing you have to do is actually place out all the special effects you want. I actually do it in two parts because it would get a bit too messy otherwise. And as you can see what happens is the uh, the, the barrel there, uh, the trolley with the barrels in comes and smashes into a pile of dynamite that explodes. Uh, we get a, a, a line of fire up to the bank which in turn explodes itself which uh, breaks the legs of the water tank uh, which then tips. The water comes out, the water uh, puts out the fire and we rinse and repeat. The idea was that it's a full little circle, its own little set. Obviously, all the fire is actually managed. It's all sort of turned on with gas uh, in real life. You know, if this was actually a, a backlot studio tour. Uh, but the idea here is that the water comes down and saves the day, so to speak. So once they're all in place, it's then a case of sort of breaking them up into little groups. So we have the trolley is one group, and then the explosion is one, then the fire trail is one. Just helps you with the timing to so make it a little bit easier. You can set each of these groups start after so long. So there with the fire trail, for instance, it goes off after uh, seven and a half seconds. And then each of the fire individually goes off 
um, sort of half a second after each of those, and then you get that line of trail there. Uh, I had to speed it up a little bit, purely because the, there's no way of pausing the flaming trolley there at the end. So eventually, there you go, perfect timing. It kind of goes blah, 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 back, back together again and flies off. So you have to kind of be done by then, really, to make this uh, sort of look decent. So there's me going through and sort of speeding up the timings a bit. Water comes down, and, um, and then the trolley goes back again. So now we're turning the water round. And I'm spending a little time here. My original plan was to use these large waterfall pieces and turn them 90 degrees. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. The water actually uh, has some form of physics built into it. So no matter which way you turn up the, uh, the, the the spawner there, the generator, the water always faces down. So I have to compromise a little bit using these splashes instead. Although I still think they look okay. I would have liked something a little that looks a little bit more like running water down the, uh, down the area. But I think these have turned out actually pretty good uh, using a combination of that strip one there and then also the sort of larger um that this one here the larger round spool and just sort of spreading them out and so that they cover up the the fire and it's a case of creating another display sequence for these uh, adding them all to it and then again sort of staggering the the the, the setting off point for these so that it looks like the water is running down the path um, and uh, and then everything sort of runs out of time, resets itself, and then they carry on moving. Obviously, what you can do uh, is make all this get set off by the uh, the trolley coming past. And then when the trolley comes past, there's also a new piece in the track now where you can pause the trolley for a second. So now the trolley pulls up for about 45 seconds, watches this happen, and then pulls away again. Obviously, the last thing we do with this ride will be to record some audio of the, um, the, the tour guide in the bus saying, oh, this set was used for such classics like... A uh, random horse, or what? I can't remember any of the westerns we did, but they usually have a random horse in them. Um, but oh no, look! And they kind of play along usually as well. Oh, there's a there's an explosion. We better watch that dynamite. You know all that kind of stuff. That's my awful American accent, sorry. Um, but that's kind of the thing they do. They really get into it, especially in the states. They really get into this kind of stuff. So uh, that's kind of what I'm feeling. We go for with it. So here, just a case of uh, adjusting the timings a little. Plane comes on, water comes off, everything goes back rinse and repeat. I will obviously show you it through in real time uh, in a moment uh, but first of all we need to put that now into place and sort of do a bit of work with the sand here. Again we need to go back and do the tracks in the sand like we've done there. Uh, I don't think I actually did that before the video ended unfortunately but we'll run the track that way a little bit and then place in. It's tricky to do because the tracks underneath the ground slightly so that you can't see it. Um, so we have to take it away and try and figure out how to do this paused feature. Just takes me a second to figure it out but eventually we get there with it. And uh, like I said, I actually think it turned out pretty well. Pretty well, to be honest with you. It turned out about as good as I could uh, hope it did, I suppose. And there we here we see them pull up and pause, hopefully. There we go. And then uh, and then all we have to do then is add a trigger sequence. Um, and then it should go off as they pull up. There you go. So again, we'll show it in real time now. Um, so you get to see what the actual explosion's like. So they they'll pull up there and then it goes off. The, uh, the fire kicks in there and the water. I can't see this. I've got, still got to do the clip, so I'm talking gibberish. Water comes down and puts it all out again. I think it turned out quite nicely. And there's a few close-ups of, the, uh, of the buildings themselves as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you can give us a like. It really helps out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, or suggestions, you can pop those down in the comments. And if you fancy a chat, you can, of course, find me on Twitter. I'm at John T. Sparrow. If you'd like to join in with the Geekism community, you can do so on our Geekism Discord server. You'll find the link for that in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.